right, guys. Good morning, everybody. All right. So glad to have you guys here. Merry Christmas. Can I say that to you guys? I'm so thrilled to, to have you guys all here today. I know we have a lot of different visitors and stuff. And guys, all I can say is welcome to the mayhem that is the, uh, the children's Christmas program this morning. And it's exciting, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Let's give these kids a round of applause. Guys, we're here to worship the Lord, and um, we're celebrating this fourth week of Advent, and the kids are going to help us out with our first song. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to invite you guys to stand with me. We're going to pray, and then the children are going to lead us in our first song. And I doubt that you know the first song, though you will recognize the tune, all right? And it's going to be very, very simple. And um, the words are going to be on the screen behind us, and you just join us and everything else. We're just going to have a great time, all right? So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these children, for our youth. I thank you, Lord, for our college kids that are home from college. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us the way that you have. I thank you for this Lord's Day, this first day of the week, as we give you the first fruits of our, of our praises, Lord, today. Uh, we celebrate Christmas, and we celebrate the coming of Christ, and we pray that you would be honored and everything that takes place, and just bless each of these kids. Lord, I know that they're just going to have a great time today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go. How are we doing back there? We got the video. The jump video. All right. We're having a computer problem. There we go. Turn it up. Roll out. Here we go. He's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. Please go ahead and be seated. The Hartmans are going to come and they're going to light our Advent. We're celebrating the fourth week of Advent. And um, let's get that microphone ready for them and everything as they need to. And come on up, guys. A little crowded. The Hartman family. All right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. This week... We focus our hearts on the Lord of Peace, who came down from heaven in the form of a baby. God knows that we are in a constant battle against fear. Fear wants to cripple us, to push us to react rather than to carefully respond, and fear steals our joy. 
God has given us the gift of peace so that we can live joy-filled lives. The fourth candle of Advent symbolizes peace. It comes from the fact that the angels announced that Jesus came to bring peace. This week, we are reminded that Jesus came to bring peace to our hearts and to our world. The scripture this Sunday for the lighting of the peace candle is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall and the weight of the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called One Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Will you bow your heads with us, please? Amen. Lord, would you bring your strength and peace to your people? Would your presence be felt by all who seek you in a powerful way in this Advent season? Turn the hearts of mankind towards you. We pray that the lost turn to you and find an unshakable peace that nothing else in this world can offer. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. We're going to sing a couple of Christmas songs today, okay? One of them I know you're going to know. The other one you may or may not know, though you probably have heard on the radio station. I'm going to invite you guys to stand, okay? So let's stand together. And let's fill this uh, room with the sounds of God's praises. Some beautiful worship together. Hail, hail.
guys are terrific. Go ahead. Let's be seated, if we will, and we're going to continue our time of worship. At this time, I think the children... No. no I think Brett is going to come. <laughs> come on, brother. <laughs> you're awesome. The mayhem. Brett, you're going to lead us in prayer today. Thank you, brother. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful day, although it might be cold and there might not be sun, but thank you that we have the opportunity to be here in your house, in your presence, uh, to be able to adore you and worship you and for the freedom we have to be here. And I pray for everyone who's here, Lord, that you uh, speak to us all through Jeff, Lord, and I pray for these kids who have put on this... Um, wonderful uh, um, singing for us, Lord. I pray that you bless their lives, Lord, and that you just touch them and they never let go of you, Lord. And it's just so hard to be out in this world, God. Just, I pray for all of the sick and all of those that we have lost, Lord God. Um, it's really difficult during this season. I think especially of my grandpa, Lord God, I pray that uh, his legacy uh, will be lived out through me, Lord God. He was such a great man. Thank you for his life. And just uh, pray for all the sick here today, Lord God. Thank you that we can be here. Amen. All right, guys. Miss Amy. I think you have a couple of kids that are eager to come up here and to, and to share a couple of jokes, I think. Is that what I understand? I'm going to give you this microphone, if that's all right. And uh, We thought that we would um, tell you some Christmas jokes today. Come up on the steps so they can hear you. And see you. Beautiful. This is Emily, and she is going to start, up, start us off with a couple of jokes this morning. Emily? Why wouldn't the Christmas tree stand up? Why wouldn't the Christmas tree stand up? It had no legs. It had no legs. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right, and one more. What kind of photos do elves take? Elfies. <laughs> that has been the favorite joke for the past three or four weeks. <laughs> awesome. Very good job. Okay, we are going to what do next? What do we do next? We're going to wait. Riker, you'll be next later. Is he ready? We can do it now. Okay, we're going to do Riker's now because he's really ready. Yeah, I think he's ready. All right, Riker. Can you tell me a joke? Uh. Can you say that? You got two gardens. Okay, we'll say it. Why does Santa have three gardens? And two gardens. So he. So what can he say? What does he say? Ho ho ho. Good job. So he can ho ho ho. Good job. Yay! next to the Can you say who is never hungry? Can you say that? What's say who? who? Take the turkey. Who's, who's yeah. never hungry at Christmas? There's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the joke is, who is never hungry at Christmas? And and who is who who's stuffed? Uh, say the, the turkey. turkey. <laughs> the turkey. Stuff. Yay! We got it out. We're going to sing another song, and you guys are going to join us because we just have lots of energy today, and you have to stand up on this song because it is a moving song. So Riker and Emily and Luke and Joel, come on up. Stand. Jump for Joy is the name of the song. Here, we're going to wait until the bell. We're going to do the bells after we sing the song, okay? We're going to do the song first, and then we'll play the bells.
Adam say the day before Christmas? What did Adam say the day before Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you remember your other one? How much does Santa's sleigh cost? How much does Santa's sleigh cost? Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, good job. You did so good, Joel. not been fun uh, for any of us and it's not been fun and it's not been great in the church um, but we started our, our children's program back up a couple of months ago and we started our youth program back up uh, a couple of months ago and stuff and all I can say is this this is our youth group and with as pretty as these girls are where are all the boys you know I mean seriously Matthew, is this microphone working okay? Very good. All right, girls, real nice, nice and loud, okay? Yeah, let's get rid of these. Savior, I can't touch with my hands. See with my eyes. Hear with my heart. 
in my ears, so I can still feel in my heart. Would it matter if I had been there at your birth? Maybe then I could have wrapped you in garments of the highest quality. Or given you a place to lay your head. Other than a trough or cattle shed. In a porch stable. I could have protected you from King Herod. In caravan miles, bring you expensive gifts. Setting them at your precious feet. I would have seen the bright star hurtle into your birth. I would have witnessed the dawn of hope at your first infant cry. I would have listened in awe beside the shepherds of the choir of angels sing out the great joy on earth for everyone. For, for us. us. I could have brought you a gift worthy of a king then. But I wasn't there. Would it matter if I had been there during your ministry on earth? Maybe then I could have followed you. I could have helped feed your disciples. I could have invited you into my home. I could have visited you when you were grieving. I could have washed your feet with oil mingled from my own tears. I would have watched and wondered as you healed the blind and raised Lazarus. I would have seen firsthand that you, Jesus, are Lord. The Lord, Lord of all. My gift would have been to serve you, Lord, but I wasn't there. Would it matter if I had been there when you died? Maybe then I could have sat with you in the garden. Offer comfort and companionship as you waited to be betrayed. I could have fought off the soldiers who arrested you and falsely accused you. I could have torn the crown of thorns from your head. And gently and gently washed your bleeding wounds made from the angry whip. I could have helped you carry the burden of the heavy cross. And mourned with your mother as your body was pierced and broken. I could have placed the sponge on your parched lips to quench your thirst. As you hung dying on the cross. For me. For me. For me. For me. For me. For, for us. us. But I wasn't there. So, Lord, it's Christmas again. And I wonder what gift I can give to my Savior. To the one who doesn't walk in flesh among us now, but le yet lives in me. Maybe that's it. I can try and live. I can try and live like you would live. I can be your hands and feet on the earth. I'll tend to the sick. And hold the hand of the dying. I'll wipe the tears of the grieving. And create a magnificent feast for my neighbor. I'll pour out gallons of pure water for the thirsty. And place warm blankets onto the shoulders of the homeless. I'll fight for the weak. Care for the widow. Speak up for the oppressed. Pray for the broken. Love your children. Lord, I'll proclaim your glory. Your honor. Your greatness. In the darkest of places. To rekindle hope to the hopelessness. Until your return. This is my gift to you this Christmas. Amen. Amen. He always makes the, the, the worship services very fun and interesting. <laughs> and, I, and I have to tell you, the, the, the church are for, for those like these. And you all know that, don't you? The innocent and the pure and the happy and the joyful. And, uh, and yep, we, we just love him. Um, we are going to need to do a couple real quick things um, in the uh, craziness of the... No, I don't have my sermon up here with me. So I have to go downstairs and grab my sermon, um, my little sermonette. But Randy needs to come for a moment and, and do something really fast. I promised him I would. Um, yeah. This is always, this is always that, that time of the year where you do this and not necessary at all. But go ahead, Randy, real quickly. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> Our congregation is giving Jeff and Amy and Matthew, who is back in the back. You hear that, a, Matthew? You get some of this. A Christmas gift. Thank you. These two have been here going on. It'll actually be 15 years come July, believe it or not. And these two right here have served the Lord so wholeheartedly and so they're so dedicated to serving the Lord and to serving this church and congregation and I just love them both to pieces and uh, from uh, our family to yours Merry Christmas thank you brother okay Merry Christmas thank you thank you guys we love you guys and uh, Merry Christmas. Very good here. hey don't go anywhere so what's gonna happen is this Amy's gonna share just briefly with you uh, just for a few seconds give me enough time to run downstairs and grab this but Amy's gonna share with you just real briefly the um, 
the things that are going to be happening here on Christmas Eve. Um, we have a nice full house. Um, wow, I mean, we were almost at the point of having to put out more chairs. We would love to have you come and be with us on Christmas Eve. Uh, I am going to tell you that um, our Christmas Eve service is the most well attended, and it really is, I think, one of the most special services of the year. Amy, share just a few moments. And then after um, Amy is done, Matthew, if you guys want to go ahead and, and, and show the video, pull the lights down, and I'll be back up by that time. Okay. Thank you. All right, yes, so if you have not been to one of our Christmas Eve services, um, it's at 6 o'clock Friday evening. It will be over between 7.15 and 7.30, so if you have family things that you want to do, you'll still have time to do that afterwards. Um, we will have um, some special music, um, some congregation music. We will share in communion together. Um, we'll have a lovely Christmas play. Um, you won't want to miss that. It's very funny. And um, we'll end the evening with a candle lighting service. So plan to attend. If you have no other plans, we would love to have you join us that night. I want to say that tonight, those of you who still have Christmas gifts to wrap, if you don't want to wrap them yourselves, the youth group is having a fundraiser tonight here from 5 to 7 o'clock, and you may bring your gifts, and they will wrap them for you. It is a fundraiser, so if you would like to donate um, some money for their time, they would love that. Um, but we would love to see you here from 5 to 7. You can drop your gifts off and come back later and get them, or you can stay and wait for them to wrap them while you're here. Um, I was going to say something else. Oh, New Year's Eve party on New Year's Eve huh? from 6 to 9. You can bring games, lots of food. This is just uh, come as you are. There is no plan for the evening. It's just a, a, a place to come and get together. So bring food and drinks and games, and we'll just have a great time of being here inside um, celebrating the end of 2021 coming into 2022 together. So that's that. Um, I got a good joke? <laughs> Jeff's not back up here yet. Um, we're good. All right. Matthew, are you ready with the video? Okay. We're going to... With kings, you show reverence, humility, honor. But I had no intention of doing that with this child. We weren't looking for a messiah, just seeking to satisfy our curiosity. You understand. Let's see if A plus B can equal C. So this curiosity led me and my companions to the one they claimed to be a king. I must tell you, I'm not moved by emotion. Skeptical for the most part. My colleagues say cynical. <laughs> Maybe they're right. I deal in logic. Maps. Stars. Books. History. So we followed the star. We found the mother and father and the boy they called Jesus in Bethlehem. Yes, I was expecting a child, but, well, there he was. The boy who drove Herod mad, who held command to armies of angels, who lured peasant shepherds away from their soul livelihood, this child they claim to be Messiah. Like I said, I, a king in my own right, had no intention of bowing to this child. I was bound only by curiosity. But then I saw him. And I, I felt a, a fascination something unmistakable, something I had never seen with my own eyes. Divinity. Since the beginning of time, kings have invented their own wild mythologies of their birth. But this king's birth was foretold by prophets long before he took his first earthly breath. Other kings spread tales to their kingdoms of their triumphs and valor. But this king said nothing. Legions of angels spoke for him. 
I think of him every day. How I went to satisfy my curiosity and, and found the answer I didn't know I needed. A messiah. Guys, for the past five weeks, we've been in a sermon series simply called Jesus Is. We started off by talking about how Jesus is the good teacher. And then we, started, then we went and we talked about how Jesus is our good shepherd. Three weeks ago, we talked about how Jesus is the high priest. We talked about how Jesus, last week, uh, we talked about how Jesus is the light of the world. Today, I want to share with you about how Jesus is Emmanuel. This is an interesting word, and I kind of realized how interesting of a word it is when my wife asked me, she says, Jeff, is Emmanuel actually spelled with an I or with an E? I've seen it both ways, and I said to her, well, it's interesting. In the original Greek, it is spelled uh, with an I, but in the Greek translation, it's actually spelled with an E. The very first time that the word Emmanuel is used in the Bible is in Isaiah chapter 7. And I'm going to encourage you, if you have a Bible, a Bible app on your phone, or anything like that, to go ahead and turn there with me right now to Isaiah chapter 7. And I would encourage you to read this chapter later today or later this week. But it is in this chapter, Isaiah chapter 7, where it describes the fear that this king of Judah was dealing with. His name was Ahaz. And he was feeling threatened by war. All of his enemies were, were talking about going to war against them and annihilating Judah from the face of the earth. But God did something very interesting. God sent a prophet, a man of God, to Judah to speak God's words to Judah, or to uh, Ahaz, to put his fears at rest. And through the prophet, through the prophet Isaiah, God literally told King Ahaz, it will not happen. You have nothing to worry about. It's interesting that today the Advent candle was fear. I did not know that. I did not realize that. But I think how absolutely appropriate for today's message. God told Ahaz, the king of Judah, you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fear. But it is interesting because God did more than just that. God also chose to take that opportunity to tell us another fact about Jesus' coming, the Christ, the Messiah, this one called Emmanuel. Do you know what the word Emmanuel actually means? What it literally means? It means that God is with us. Now, this is an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I think so often in life, we go through life and we find ourselves in hard places, difficult times and so forth. And we cry out to God, God, I need you. Where are you? Please help me, you know, with this situation. We've all been there at different times. God, please help my, my son as he's heading off to Purdue. Father, please help my daughter as she's gotten married and she's heading off to Atlanta, Georgia, this place so far, far away with this husband who's going into the ministry. I just feel like, you know, a sheep being fed to the wolves. Lord, please, I need you. And the word Emmanuel is God is with us. In verse 14 of Isaiah chapter 7, it says this, The Lord himself will give you a sign. A sign. Now, he's talking to Ahaz. He's talking to this king. He's telling Ahaz, you have absolutely nothing to be worried about. You feel as though all of these people and all of these countries and all of these things are threatening you. But I am telling you, it will not happen. You have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fear. And, and, to, and, and in fact, I'm going to give you a sign. But here's the thing. It says that God was going to give Ahaz a sign. But guys, I am telling you, the sign was really for us today. It wasn't for Ahaz. 
it was for us. And I'll explain. In verse 14, it says, The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will be called what? Emmanuel, God with us. So what was the purpose of God telling King Ahaz that his enemies would not, you know, destroy them and that he had nothing to worry about? And what was God's purpose in also describing the, the, the coming of the Messiah? Why was God doing that in this particular chapter? The th truth is, guys, if you continue to read in chapter 7, you will find that God, again, through the prophet Isaiah, described how King Ahaz and the people of Judah would see devastation taking place all around them. They would see scary things, frightening things, ungodly things taking place to the right, to the left, before and behind them. All kinds of things that would cause them to, to want to be fearful they would see things around them that would tempt them to have dread, to be full of dread. But God told them some very interesting things. He told them to keep their faith. Keep your faith. Nothing will touch you or cause harm to you. You just need to keep your faith. And then after that, after that, God will send the Christ. He will send Emmanuel. It's a very, very interesting thing, guys. We look at this passage, and in the, the, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah is one of those prophets we, we read every year at Christmas times because there are so many prophecies that were written seven, eight hundred years before the coming of Christ. Seven, eight hundred years describing how God would send us the Christ. All kinds of different things foretold in advance. But the thing that's very interesting is after Jesus came and after Jesus fulfilled all that he needed to fulfill, most of which was his death upon the cross, paying a penalty for our sins. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this. You know, God is, is, is sovereign. He is holy. He, 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 he is always good. But even God is subject, subject to certain things. And the fact of the matter is God tells us that the, the penalty of sin is what? It's death. The penalty for our sins is death. If we have sin in our lives, then, then the penalty for our sins is going to be our death. And there was nothing that could be done about that. But God, out of his great love for us, said, you know what? I can pay this penalty because I love my, my, my creation. God loves you. He loves me. He loves us. God knew. He said, I can do something. I can send myself. I can become man in, 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 the, in the name of Jesus. And I can come and I can pay the penalty of their sins by dying upon the cross. And Jesus did that and he fulfilled that. But what happened after Jesus rose from the grave? He rose from the grave three days later. And then 40 days after that, what does the Bible tell us that Jesus did? He ascended back into heaven. This is very, very interesting. But, my friends, the Bible also tells us that Christ will come again. He will come a second time. And this second time, not as, you know, the Lamb of the world, but this second time, Jesus is going to come as the King of Kings, right? And also in the Bible, throughout the Bible, are hundreds of, Hundreds of different passages in the Bible that's describing Jesus' second coming. Guys, this passage here in Isaiah chapter 7 is a description of Jesus' second coming. I believe so much more than Jesus' first coming. The fact of the matter is Ahaz was nervous and anxious because he saw all kinds of ungodly things taking place all around him. And yet, what was God's message to Ahaz? Don't worry. They will not overtake you. All you have to do is not worry. And it says those words, do not worry. Have faith. Take heed. Trust in me. Keep your eyes on me and it will all be good. It will all be fine. Today, we look at the things going on all around us today, right? 
That's right, buddy. The good little man. It's almost time, buddy. I promise you, we're 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 almost time. We're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna go take a bath <laughs> in just a few minutes, buddy. He's excited. Guys, listen to me. I, in, in all seriousness, please listen to me carefully. Guys, today we live in a world that's really, 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 really messed up. I remember so clearly the events of 9-11. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, is this the beginning of, of the end? And I'm not so sure if it wasn't the beginning, perhaps, perhaps, of the end. Are we in the last days, in the end times? I, I have people say, well, how can we not be? The Bible is describing this. You know, I, I'm sure people probably have thought at different times throughout history that they were in the last days. But I will say this. There are things that are being fulfilled, um, written, described in prophecy about the things that will happen in the last days that we have never, ever seen until just recently. Are we in the last days? I kind of suspect we are. I really do. I kind of suspect we are. One thing is absolutely for certain. We should be living as though we are in those last days. And if you're not, oh, guys, that's, a, that's just a risky kind of scary thing. To not be ready. And yet for those who are looking to Christ, those who are looking to God, the message that Isaiah the prophet had for King Ahaz is the message that God has for us today. If we are looking to God and, and we are, are focused on him and trust in him, guys, we have nothing to fear by the things that are going on. God does not want us to live in fear. God does not want us to be anxious. Now, I, I, think, I think it's important to be smart, isn't it? You know, we need to be smart. You know, I, I, I know that some of you have come in and you knew that there were going to be a crowd. And so you, you kind of, you know what? I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit more susceptible. I'm going to wear my mask. You know what? I, I think that in this day and age, we need to be smart and we need the Lord to help lead us and guide us and give us wisdom. But one thing is for sure. Please hear me. If you have Christ in your life, if you are following the Lord, the message, the message that God would want you to hear today, I believe more than anything else, if you are already following Jesus, the message he would want to say to you is, be calm, be still, don't worry, do not be afraid. That, ma that passage, that message, do not be afraid, is written, is recorded over 300 times in the Bible. Do not be afraid. Those variations of those things. And those words are written to those who follow Christ. If you're a follower of Christ, even though, and, and, and I don't have it, I'm, I'm going to read it because I do. This is really good. The psalmist, I don't have my glasses. I took them off. Why did I do that? The psalmist also, also says this. Let me find it. Where's my last one? Very last one. Uh, uh, you know what? I already know what it says. Though the mountain give way, you have nothing to fear. Though the sky roll up like a scroll, you have nothing to fear. Though the sky turn dark and all of the lights diminish and go away, you have nothing to fear in a world today that is screaming at us to be nervous about this and fearful of this and, and worried and anxious. More people on medicine than ever before. More people seeing their doctors than ever before. Anxiety has never, ever, ever been so high. We have all of these devices that make our, our lives supposedly so much easier, right? And yet more people are anxious just messed up, frightened. And the message is, is, you trust in me. Be careful. Because the devil will want to trip you and deceive you. You keep your eyes on me. You trust me. Have faith in me. You do those things. You have nothing to fear. My friends, today we are baptizing three very, very special little people. 
In a moment, I'm going to have those three very special people come up here. One of them is Addie Leathers. Addie came to uh, me and Amy. Actually, she came to her grandma, and then her grandma came to me. And then her grandma talked Addie into uh, talking to us because she, she was a little nervous about talking to us about it. But she said, I want to be baptized. Grandma started asking her, do you know what it means to be baptized? I love Jesus. He's in my heart. I've asked him to forgive me of my sins. I want to be baptized. She's a young little girl, but I want to tell you what, she's smarter than three quarters of us. I'm just telling you. She is. You, you think I'm joking about that. I'm not. She scored perfectly on her whatever school thing. Um, but she's just absolutely brilliant. Joel Sandlin's going to come. He's going to be baptized. It's this young little boy. And he was downstairs, uh, maybe it was a month ago, with, with his teacher downstairs, and they were talking. And he said, you know what, I, I, I'm not scared of death. Really? No, not at all. Because I know that when I die, I'm going to see God. And I really, really want to know what God looks like. Little Luke, he runs up and down our aisles. And he's just got the joy of the Lord in him. And I would not dare stop him. For those, for those are the, are, are, are the ones that we're to be like. Have that, that faith, childlike faith. And you may wonder, does, 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 does little Luke, does he understand everything that's going on and everything? And, and he's already excited. And look, there he comes. Hey, Bubby. Is he all excited? Yeah, you know what? He is all excited. But I'm going to tell you, yesterday, last night, right before the football game, right before the football game, I, I get a text message from his dad, from Jeremy. And in the text message, he says this. He says, you know, the, the boys came home. Luke and um, Joel came home from their Christmas practice yesterday here from church. And he says, little Luke, he just all day, he's been going around all excited. And the things that he keeps saying again and again and again is, Jesus, Jesus. I, I am so proud and I'm so happy for you guys. And um, Addie, why don't you come on down? I'm going to begin with you, okay, sweetheart? Come on down. Amy Hamlin. Please come. Yeah, let's use this.
Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. What a, what a blessed day we have had. Father, it's just it's filled with joy. Lord, you love us so much. You just shower gifts from us upon us as your children. Day after day after day. And even when we find ourselves in, in the difficult times, in the, in the trials and struggles, we see things going on around us, Lord. I'm so thankful, Father, God, that we can have faith that we are your children and that your good heavenly Father, Lord, you're never going to put our things in the past to your children. I pray, Father God, for those that are here today, and, and maybe they have walked with you, Lord, in the past, or maybe they, it's just something that, uh, that I don't know, right? they've almost maybe walked away from. Found themselves here today just experiencing the, the glory, Lord, that, that we experience here today. Father God, I pray for them. I pray, Father God, that you would continue to, as a loving Father, that you would continue to speak to them, to open their eyes and their hearts to the wonderful things. Lord, please, I pray, Father God, help them, Lord, to, to, to take those, 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 those simple little steps, Lord, to out of the, the, the deception of this dark world. Yes.